Hey everyone, this is Smarter Home Life, and I'm Jody Gansick. On the most recent video review of the IKEA smart lighting products, a number of you said, well, you know, thanks for including that uh, Smart Things demo where you showed us that you can control these guys right through a Smart Things hub and not go through the IKEA trot free gateway. But how did you do it? And since I've been promising uh, to do some how to content over the summer, I thought, well, it's July, so it's no better time than to get started here on July first. So for this demo, for this instructional video, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need at least one, just any smart lighting trot free product from Ikea. You're obviously going to need a SmartThings hub. You're going to need a free SmartThings developer account. I'll show you uh, how to jump in to get that. And obviously you're going to need a little bit of free time but I'll show you all the steps. And since I don't always show a lot of love for our audience members who are not on iOS, I thought I would do the smartphone, the smartphone, phone, phone portions of the demos, this time on Android. The first thing you'll need to do is set up a SmartThings developer account, which is free and available to everyone who has a SmartThings hub. Be sure that your SmartThings hub is up and running and your developer account is created and active before starting this process. Developer accounts can be set up in just a few minutes by using the sign up button at the top right of this page. Once you've confirmed that all of that is done, come back here and click login at the top right. Enter your existing SmartThings credentials and you'll be sent to the default development portal but you may get this message that you don't have any hubs yet. This is because SmartThings has multiple servers where your hub could be attached to, and it doesn't forward you there automatically. This SmartThings forum page, which I'll link to in the video description, has the various portal addresses. Try each one, depending on which part of the world you live in, until that you don't have any hubs yet message is replaced by this one. Bookmark your particular developer portal address, and now you're ready to create the device handler. Click the My Device Handlers menu item at the top of the page. Now, you'll head to this page on GitHub to get the device handler code. Yes, it's also linked to in the video description. Copy all of the code in the box, then head back to your SmartThings developer portal. Click the green Create New Device Handler button at the top right, then click the From Code option at the top left, and paste in the code you just copied. Now click the blue Create button at the bottom left. The page will refresh and show a light green Created Smart Device banner at the top. Now click the Publish button at the top right, and a submenu item will appear that says For Me, and you'll go ahead and click that menu item. This will publish the device handler for your particular SmartThings account only. And you're done. You now have a dedicated device handler for your IKEA smart lights. Now it's time to pair them up with the SmartThings hub. If you previously had your IKEA lights paired with their own gateway or any of the remotes, it's best to just reset them. To do this, first turn the light on, then flip it off and back on again six times in rapid succession. After the sixth time, it will blink once very quickly. By the way, I'm going to apologize in advance for the poor quality of casting from my Android phone, as it's definitely not a high-end model. Now that that is over with, turn off the light, at least for a few seconds, open the SmartThings app on your phone, go to the My Home tab at the bottom, and the Things tab at the top. Scroll all the way down and tap Add a Thing. Turn the light back on and place it very close to your SmartThings hub. Close proximity is the name of the game here. It may take a minute, but the hub should find the IKEA light. And if it doesn't identify it correctly, don't worry, we'll fix that. Once it does show up, you can rename it, proceed forward, and then tap OK to confirm. If this process seems familiar, it's because these IKEA smart lights are Zigbee based and the pairing process is pretty similar across most Zigbee devices. If your hub didn't ID the light correctly, jump back to the SmartThings developer portal and click the My Devices menu item at the top. Then locate the IKEA light that you just added in the list and click its name. 
you'll most likely see the correct data attributes show up, but the type of thing will be incorrect. Click the Edit button at the bottom left. Now click the Type menu. It's a few rows down from the top. Scroll it all the way down and click IKEA Trod Free. Click the Update button and you're done. Repeat these steps for any misidentified lights. Now, back at the Hub and the SmartThings app, you should now see the status of and have control of your IKEA smart light. Repeat this entire pairing process for all of the IKEA lights you wish to add to your SmartThings Hub. Okay, so to save some time, I've already gone through and swapped out my bulbs. I usually use my, uh, these are the older Cree bulbs, the 4Flow design, but they work really well with my Insteon dimmers and I'm really kind of finicky about that stuff. So anyway, sometimes the old stuff is better. These were uh, soft white uh, 40 watt equivalent uh, from the old incandescent days. So I've gone through and switched these from the Insteon dimmer over to full power. Never put any type of smart bulb on a dimmer because it'll reduce the life, cause a fire, it'll cause problems ultimately uh, and probably screw up the bulb and your dimmer. So uh, if you've done everything right, all the different steps, and, and if you've had to kind of go in and, and match up the right type of bulb because uh, SmartThings didn't identify it correctly, if you did all that stuff right, then you should see in your SmartThings app, uh, like I have here, depending on how many you added and what you called them, uh, you should see your bulbs. They should be on. They should be ready to go. They might be at a different dim level than, than mine are, but that's okay. So obviously, you know, the basics, turning them off and turning them back on again, that's really not that interesting. We can go in, and for this demo, um, just to show you a couple things, uh, the, the key studio light tends to kind of wash this stuff out. So I'm going to shut it off here because I've got remotes for everything. And uh, so I can go in. You see this is 3%. I... I'll show you here in a second. I really feel that IKEA, hey, if you're watching this video, please make some adjustments via firmware that 3% is really 3%. This is like 15 or 18%. This is not dim. This is like still kind of somewhat bright, but I'm really finicky about dimming. So that's that's just me. And uh, so anyways, I can go in and I can go to the three preset levels. This is the clear bulb. This bulb over here is just the standard dimmable bulb. So I'm not gonna really play with that much. These are the standard three levels that you get with the uh, with the app with the IKEA app and Gateway and with the remotes uh, with that fancy remote the circular one that's got the buttons on it. So and as you can see as I step through these, um, you can see in the shot that it's going from kind of that super warm to the soft white to the uh, more towards daylight white. But even that is not that interesting. And if I bring this up, I can go in, uh, before I do that, let me go into the settings. So when you go into the settings, you've seen that the developer of this um, device handler has made some interesting adjustments and, uh, and, and allows the bulbs to even be smarter than what they were originally with the IKEA uh, integrations. So link level change with color temperature means it's going to perform it's going to act like an old-fashioned incandescent bulb as you dim it down it's going to get warmer as you bring it up it's going to get uh, more towards the white side kind of the soft white side and you can see that you can have a delay in between the the color temperature change and the um, dimming the brightness level and you can set your kind of your um, the ranges in terms of how low you're going to go on the warm side and how high you're going to go on the cooler side when you get to the higher brightnesses. So if I demo that, which it's again, when we get to the higher uh, brightness, it's going to kind of wash out anyways. So if I go, if I bring this guy up, this screen is really bad for sensing uh, fingers. So anyways, it's going to start washing out, but you'll see that it's kind of going to go towards the warmer side. It actually switched there. I'm going to bring this higher. Now it's going to really be uh, kind of washed out, but it is towards more the cooler side or it's about 3200 I believe Kelvin for the color temperature if I bring it down now behave there we go uh, it's going to come down and it's going to dim in brightness and now it's going to bring it down to the color temperature more on that warm yellowish side so I'm going to turn that off because I want to fiddle with this here and override it what you're seeing uh, down on the bottom of the app are those three presets that I just showed you, but you can fiddle around with them as well. So if I tap on here, the middle of this, I can then make some adjustments. Now, it's harder to see here, so I'm gonna show you the, the super close up of the bulb itself in a dark environment. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna adjust this up. 
and you'll see that the LEDs themselves are capable of actually going much lower in brightness themselves, but Ikea's done something with the firmware to prevent that from happening with the actual dimming, the master dimming level. So Ikea, please work on that. Make 1% be 1%. So if I bring this down, you can see that in individual steps and in individual, um, a much more fine control than you get through the rest of Ikea's integrations and apps. This is a better way to do it. And it shows that the bulb is capable of this, even though um, Ikea's uh, default settings don't let you do this. So the bulb is capable of a lot more, and uh, so you can have some fun with this, and you can bring it down uh, to a lot lower, uh, yeah, a lot more granular control. And I think that's pretty cool. So if this is kind of you know all you want to do with the products, uh, and with smart things, then that's perfect. You can set them up, you can have them. Uh, I'm gonna bring the, the studio light back on here. If that's all you wanna do, you can set them up, you can turn them on and off, you can have these advanced features, you can set them up for some simple automations with what uh, smart things refers to as routines. And obviously you can put them into a room which would allow them to act more as a group. But then again, you might wanna do something more advanced. But for the simple side, I'm gonna stop right there, but as a bonus video, we're gonna show you a little bit more on the advanced side. Maybe you wanna do some, maybe some voice control with something like the Google Home and Google Assistant. I will show you that in the next video, which is linked down in the video description and probably up in the corner up there as well. So keep watching or click that link if you want some more advanced, kind of more in-depth knowledge. Otherwise, I will say thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Catch us across social media at Smarter Home Life. And we've got a big move coming up. All of this has got to be packed up and undone, moved to a new location. We're going to crowdfund that move for the location search and also getting there. If you can help out, head over to GoFundMe.com slash Smarter Home Life, and you can be part of the process of picking the new location and all the technology that's going to go into it. And of course, if you do help out, well, I'll love you forever. Anyways, I'm Joe Deganzik for Smarter Home Life. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.